we're going to take you into the realm of the supernatural and we're going to move just into the city walls just behind york minster you can see it highlighted there on your map i am taking you to the treasurer's house which is supposedly one of the most haunted buildings in york there it is in all its splendor it's actually been a house on that site since the early 12th century and the building that you see there was rebuilt between the 15th and 16th century so it's a lovely jacobean house there which is now owned by the national trust it is open Open to visitors, but as with so many things in the current climate, uh, it's uh, temporary closed. But it will be reopening, and you can actually venture down into the cellar of the treasurer's house and hear the story of one of the city's most famous ghost tales. Now, this actually links into one of the York gins that we have the <coughs> Roman fruit. So those of you that are local to the city will know exactly which tale I'm going to go in. But for now, I'm going to hand you over to Jo, who has is does have in her hand the Roman fruit gin. I so, do, I do, I do. Here we do. Now, I am going to make you a bloody good Roman fizz. Wow, what else? Okay, so look, it's you normally just put it. So I've got a nice champagne glass. Oh, I'm knocking things about. Champagne glass, the drop of lemon, and some ice cubes now because of this grizzly gruesome tales that we are doing i am actually going to serve the roman fruit via a syringe oh. i feel this calls for a cackle <laughs> <laughs> so i'm dribbling that into my oh look at that not bad eh nom 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 right and then you top it up with champagne I just happened to find this in the back of my fridge. Hurrah for Harvey Nichols and these champagnes. I think I had it for Christmas last year. So I'm going to top that up with that. Oh, what a lovely sound. Give it a little squeeze out, a little stir. Cheers. Cheers. That looks Cheers. I put strawberries in mine. That I is don't have a fancy bloody good Roman fizz. Oh, strawberry! Look at you, you decadent wench! You absolutely. I don't I'm have, to have fresh raspberries on there, but I forgot to get them out, so I've got That's no right. fresh fruit. You can do the fresh fruit for me, Mad Alice. Yeah. I will. To be normal, uh, to be honest, I normally neck it straight from the bottle anyway. So <laughs> drinking from a glass. Oh, you're such a classy, classy wench. Classy wench. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, inspired by the Roman fruit, we are a Roman city built in 71 AD when the Romans first came to us. And this story, like I say, it takes place down in the basement of the treasurer's house. And it happened in 1953 when a young man called Harry Martindale was down there doing some work and he was hammering a hole in the wall. He suddenly heard in the distance the sound of a single note from a trumpet horn. That's actually a left cheek sneak there that you can hear. But uh, it was the sound of a trumpet horn. And uh, thinking it was something happening outside, he didn't pay too much attention to it. So he carried on with his work until he realised that the sound was growing louder and louder and appeared to be coming from behind the solid wall that he was working up against. So as he looked down from his ladder to work out where this noise was coming from, <laughs> He was surprised to see that from out of the wall in front of him stepped the figure of a Roman soldier. Yeah. You, would, you would be kind of surprised, wouldn't you? You'd be more than surprised. Oh. Well, in a state of shock and panic, Harry fell off his ladder, scrambled into the corner of the room as these soldiers emerged from the wall and gradually but steadily walked from one side of the room to the other and disappeared through the opposite wall. No sooner had this solitary soldier disappeared when a great big black cart horse emerged from the wall and on top of the horse another Roman soldier. The horse followed exactly the same path and disappeared. But then after this, more soldiers began to emerge from the wall, walking side by side in pairs. Harry counted about 20 of them altogether. So you can imagine it was a terrifying sight. But what was unique about these figures was that they were actually looked like real people, meaning that they were solid figures. So they weren't see-through, how you think ghosts to be. 
he could make out all the details of their dress right down to the mud stains on their clothes he could see they had these bronze with a beaten helmets on with undyed plumes of feathers out the top and he could even see the weapons they were carrying some of them were carrying spears others were carrying short swords on their right side and in their left arms they had these round shields with raised centers but when it came to their feet, Harry noticed something quite peculiar. They were only visible from the knees upwards. So as they walked into the room, it looked like they were walking on their knees. And it wasn't until they actually stood in a trench that had been dug out in the centre of the room that that's when their feet became visible. And they could even see the straps of the sandals laced all the way up to the knee. When he was certain that the last of these soldiers had disappeared through the wall and the sound of the trumpet horn had died down, Harry quickly picked himself up and legged it out of the cell. <laughs> Don't blame him. He ran straight into the curator of the building who took one look at Harry and before Harry could tell him anything about what he'd just seen, the curator turned to him and said, Oh dear, from the look of you, You've just seen our Roman soldiers downstairs, haven't you? So <laughs> Harry wasn't the first person, nor was he the last, but he has become the most famous person to witness these soldiers. And the reason being is because of what happened in the years that followed. You see, not very many people believed Harry when he first came out with his story in 1953. But in 1969, archaeologists began excavating underneath the central tower of York Minster. So you'd seen on that map that the treasurer's house is literally just around the back of the Minster. And there they were surprised to find the remains of the Roman headquarters building, a building known as the Principia. And alongside these findings, they actually discovered one of the major Roman roads of the city. This is a road that starts from the headquarters building, runs underneath the treasurer's house and out to the gate on the northeast side of the city. They found this Roman road buried 18 inches below the cell of oh, no. no. <laughs> so if you think of the depth of 18 inches, which is uh, roughly the same length from your knee down to your foot, this That's would explain amazing. why Harry wasn't able to see their feet when they first appeared, because they were walking along their original road. Are you seeing yeah. That's, That's so spooky. That's really spooky. So that's just one of the tales that the treasurer's house does have to offer. But I have an exclusive for you this evening. Which is very exciting. You see, as I mentioned, there are around about 35 ghosts of the treasurer's house. And I spend a lot of time at the treasurer's house. And I was there not so long ago. In fact, it was the week of Halloween when I got talking to a lady who had been around the property during that day. And she was taking various photographs in each of the rooms. And she was drawn to this particular Victorian mirror situated in one of the rooms. Making sure that nobody else was around in the room, she took a quick snap of her. And here you can see the actual live photograph that she captured. So not only can you see the figure moving behind her, can you see it moving from... Yeah, yeah absolutely. All the booth around going on. But if you look very carefully at this image, you'll notice that not only does it appear that the woman is actually wearing some sort of white nightgown, she also seems to be transparent <laughs> oh. so who is this mysterious figure that's seen walking behind her she did say at the time she was taking the photograph she did feel a gust of wind behind her but assuming it was an open window she didn't really pay too much attention oh it was only my gosh the images that she realized <laughs> that's not right that's oh. Not oh i'm glad that wasn't me <laughs> Oh, no, you see, it's a good thing, isn't it? And that was only taken. So the spirits of the treasurer's house do like to pick their timings. That was actually taken the week of Halloween. Oh. So there you go. Once it reopens, get yourselves in there, see what's going on. Oh.